JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 12th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our, into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading higher against uh, all but one of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It rose the most versus NOC, AUD, Canadian dollar and the Q in that order, while it decked out uh, the least gains against the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Swiss franc. Once again, the performance in the FX sphere suggests that investors continue trading in a risk of uh, fashions. Indeed, uh, taking a look uh, at the equity world, we see that uh, major EU and US indices tumbled on average around 5% with the negative morale, uh, although softer, uh, rolling into the Asian session today. Although China's Shanghai Composite was nearly unchanged, Japan's uh, Nikkei 25, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's uh, KOSPI slid 0.80, 1.10 and 2.06% uh, uh, respectively. It appears that uh, post uh, the FOMC decision, Investors, continue, in, investors continued reducing their risk exposures, perhaps locking more profits following the recent uh, steep recovery in equities and risk-linked currencies since the end of March. Another reason behind yesterday's slide may have been uh, that participants focused uh, again on the coronavirus, uh, on the coronavirus numbers with uh, the number of uh, daily infected cases hitting a new record yesterday. However, our own view is that this may be partly owed uh, to more testing. In any case, as long as governments around the globe continue to ease their lockdown measures and as long as economic data continue to point that the deep economic wounds due to the coronavirus are behind us, we would treat the current retreat as a corrective phase of the broader recovery. We still see decent chances for equities and um, other risk-linked and other risk-linked assets to rebound again, and for safe havens to come under renewed selling interest. We would we would reconsider that view in case nations uh, start imposing a fresh round of uh, restrictions, which may be a new blow to the global economy. Now back to the currencies, the uh, British. The British uh, pound was also lower against its uh, US counterpart. Today we already got the UK's uh, monthly GDP, industrial production and the nation's trade balance or for April. Economic activity tumbled 20.4% month over month after sliding 5.8% uh, with the forecast being at uh, minus 18.7%. This drove the year-over-year -year rate down to minus 24.5% from minus 5.7%. Industrial production also accelerated its decline to minus 20.3% month-over-month from minus 4.2%, while the nation's trade deficit narrowed to 7.49 billion pounds from 11.85 billion. The collapse in economic activity during April may have increased uh, the chances for the introduction of uh, negative interest rates by the Bank of England, but the pound did not uh, react. It seems that uh, the currency stays more linked to developments and headlines surrounding Brexit. On Friday, EU and UK negotiators uh, said that they have made very little progress in their latest round of talks, and with just a few days left for the UK to ask for an extension to the transition period, headlines on that front may carry extra weight as we get closer to the June 18th and 19th EU summit. 
UK Prime Minister Johnson has been insisting on a December 31st uh, deadline for finding common ground, while EU Chief Negotiator Barnier noted that the deal needs to be sealed by the end of October to allow enough time for ratification by the bloc's 27 member states. The UK's position for no extension beyond uh, December was reaffirmed yesterday by Cabinet Office uh, Minister uh, Michael Gove, who said that the UK will not seek an extension of uh, the transition period. With all that in mind, anything pointing to further disagreement could strengthen the case for an ODL Brexit at the end of this year and may add pressure to the British pound. That said, we prefer to exploit any further pound losses against uh, risk-linked currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi. Yes, both may continue to trade on the back foot if investors continue to reduce their risk exposure for a while more, but if indeed the risk appetite rebounds again at some point, we expect those currencies to perform pretty well. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, uh, Eurozone's industrial production for April is coming out and the expectations are for a 20% month-over-month tumble after a slide of 11.3%, uh, while from the US we get uh, the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for June. The index is expected to increase to 75 from 72.3. As for the speakers, we have two on today's agenda, ECB Supervisory Board Chief uh, Andrea Enria and the Richmond Fed, Fed President Thomas uh, Barkin. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about uh, the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.